I'd like us to share the word of God. I'd like us to meditate together. To discover God's love, God's death together. To know and find out how great is God is and to fear him together. He's a great God. And then the Son. So many times we forget who he is. When we always mourn or wish <coughs> why this has happened. According to me, this is how I find it. When you have a child who's, who's about to crawl, they touch everything and everywhere. They would go anywhere. They would like to touch everything. Sometimes they mess the, all the equipment or appliances. That is when us as parents really try to figure out especially in the kitchen, you will be so you you will be um, so thoughtful and thinking that knowing that the child cannot touch everything. This example is like us before the father. So many times we forget him. We think that we are able to do everything. We want to do what we think we can do. But at that time, as a parent, should find the way he knows us and put us back on track. Amen. If something happens, <coughs> I always say, I always say, God, what are you trying to say? Because there's no mistake with him. He puts us back on track in so many ways. Sometimes he touches our hearts. Sometimes he smacks us. Sometimes he shouts us. He can punish us and lock us, and us in the room. And he does that for our own good. Even if we are crying, but it is for our own good. When a child is starting to walk, if they want to touch a, a cooker, you, are, you tell them and they don't listen, you have to smack them. It's told to make sure that they don't um, have any problems. Let's go to Psalm 24. À l'éternel, la terre est ce qu'elle renferme, le monde est ce qu'il habite. Amen. Amen. The whole world and everything in it belongs to the Lord. À l'éternel, la terre est ce qu'elle renferme, le monde est ce qu'il habite. The whole world and everything in it belongs to God. He is the King of Kings and the Master of all. We are the works of His hands. The Bible, the word says that the world, the earth, and everything in it belong to God. Nothing belongs to us. 
That is why when we sometimes want to do things, we forget that we depend on Him. We want God to hold us so that we don't stumble. As the works of his hand, we must remember this as long as we live. It's only one verse. The whole world and everything in it belong to God. If we put this verse in our minds and our hearts, we want to step to the left or right, we will ask ourselves, what am I? What have I got that I acquired by myself? What strength have I got to do things by myself? If we keep this verse in our heart and mind, we will realize that we need God at all times. We need God at all times. Because the world confirms that he is the master of all. So we should always seek to go back to his to the Father. To him who is the master of all, him who owes who owns everything. Hallelujah. Amen. Sometimes as children of God, we, we sleep or we dream a lot. Sometimes, the word says that sometimes we fool ourselves with our own reasoning. Sometimes we just think or do things without putting God First, when I'm listening or hearing about everything that's happening, and when I hear about what's happening for uh, from afar, I'm just wondering myself why why all this is happening. When I'm, asking, when, I'm, when I'm asking myself that question, I always go back to God, to Him who owns everything. God says, from the first time He created us, He knew our lives. He knows how long we will live on this earth. When we give birth, who knows how long our child will live? Even when we are here, when we hear, who knows how long they will live? This is to show that human uh, thinking or mind is really Every time we must bow down, kneel down before the Father. I compare our life, our lifespan as a fish in the water. A fish in the water is happy, swimming, playing, and sometimes they're doing hide and seek when they're in the water. But remember someone, a father who wakes up one morning and says, 
I am going to fish today. He gets his um, if his fish fish nets or whatever he goes to catch the fish. And they're playing hide and seek in the water, enjoying themselves. And he says, the fish it says, oh, I can see like a, a, a piece of bread. Here. Let me go and eat that piece of bread, not knowing that it's going to be cold. That is how I compare our lives. Someone is thinking that you are not, not no longer going to be alive today. They could be a good or a bad person. But you don't know that. But if you are under the Father's feet, and you know that heaven and earth belong to him, and you know that your daily life belongs to him. You will come and bow down before him. Thank you, Father, for this morning. Thank you for being healthy. Thank you because you woke my family up. Thank you for waking my neighbors up. Thank you because I, hear, I can hear the noise that means that you woke people. You gave me the strength to be moving today. I know that it all comes from me. I know that I cannot do anything. I don't know what my life is, my life is going to be like today. But you do today, God. You know what's going to happen to my family. Lord, lead me. May your will be done. May glory be unto you. When you see the daylight, you commit it to God's hands. That hide and seek, you will not do it someday, you will do it somewhere else. Why are we why, why are we like this? It's because we are at ease. When we take it, we spend when we don't get a slap from our father for a long time, we we treat him as a friend. Amen. I don't know if you with me here. When the father uh, uh, hits us or slaps us, he realizes that you are drifting apart. Pastor always tell, tells us that when our granddad used to call him, he would check how long it's going to take him to come, whether it's going to take long or it's going to come straight away. If he realizes that he's coming, like he's not, he doesn't even, he doesn't even want to come, he knows that that child is not even happy to come. Okay, I didn't call you to ask you to do something. I wanted to give you this gift, but because I see your attitude, you're not going to get it. And if we don't get a slap from the father, we don't respect him that much. That's why he, we need a slap every time to go back on track. If we are not giving priority to God's things, it means we just It means we just treating him like a mate. But if you if you just think saying that trees, water, everything belongs to him, 
that will tell you to humble yourself. When you examine yourself, you will humble yourself and go back to him. Because in order for me to be, he has to be with me. Hallelujah. Amen. God is our Father. Let's go back to Him. Let's look at look at ourselves and realize that everything we owe, we own, belong to Him. We are always ungrateful. We are always ungrateful. You know, whenever we want something, how we cry out to him. Job was blessed in everything. But when he lost everything, his wife, his wife told him to insult God. The glory that he had came from God, but his wife had the guts to tell him to insult God. I always like how he answered to his wife. He said, we get everything good from the Father. So what's wrong with getting something bad from it? from him this time. I'd like you and I to read <coughs> all the blessings that God gives us that we sometimes forget about. Amen. I want you and I to read. Because sometimes we neglect God. I told you that at some point I realized that God is not doing anything. <coughs> because what I was waiting for, what I was asking, I did not get it. I have, when things got tough. I thought, God, you are not doing anything. And when it was prayer time, I told the family, you pray, I'll pray later. Bedtime, I'll tell the family, you pray, I'll pray by myself. It didn't take long. It didn't take even three weeks. There was a day that I really realized that, yes, God watches over us. <laughs> when I saw that Eric was bleeding in the bath, <laughs> it was like thick blood. He was crying for a belly ache. He was bleeding. I was like cleaning the bath, but he did not stop. I could see Eric getting old in front of me. How he was shrinking and how he became like an old person right in front of me. <coughs> and I could see the spirit of death standing in front of me. He had all the scales from the head to the tail. He was holding a knife. I started looking at him and started praying. I was talking in tongues that I never spoke before. He looked at me and laughed. He said, I'm going, but I'll be back. And I told him, you'll never come back in the name of Jesus. I could see him opening the bathroom door and going out. 
And at the same time, Eric kept on bleeding. Na realizaki juu wana. That day I realized. Na zole lanza mazo salate. I was crying, but God was not doing anything. Mitao na lomba kinza mazo salate makamnyo sio zalaki day. But when I was saying that God is not doing anything, none of this was happening. Nza maliki wole sana ke na tiki yuka kama one second mitao na kabo isalami. God showed me that I only gave up on you for. One second, look at what's happened. I realize that he is a good God. We can't let leave him for one minute. Sometimes we make mistakes, but by but putting other things first. Oh, sometimes you say, oh, let me do this first. God will understand. We lie to ourselves. We have nowhere to run. We have nowhere to hide. Amen. The whole world and everything in it, including you and I, belong to him. Psalm 139. Verse 7 to 12. Psalm 139. Psalm et où fuirai-je loin de ta face Si je monte aux cieux, tu y es. Si je me cache au séjour des morts, tu vois là. Si je prends les ailes de l'aurore et que j'aille habiter à l'extrémité de la mer, là aussi ta main me conduira et ta droite me saisira. Si je dis au moins les ténèbres me couvriront, la nuit devient lumière autour de moi. Même les ténèbres ne sont pas obscures pour toi. La nuit brille comme le jour et les ténèbres comme la lumière. Amen. 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 Where shall I go from your presence? Where shall I hide in front of before the Lord? When we neglect God and do our own thing, it's a way of hiding, saying, yeah, I'll do my own things and do God's things after. Where will you run or hide from God? He says, before you even think, I know what you are. Before you speak, I already know what's going to come out of your mouth. Where shall we flee before him? Why not do his will and have a good relationship with him? Because the day that we will be caught in the nest we don't know. In the net. When I'm thinking about Papa Kanguma's death, I don't know his heart, only God knows. Mm -hmm. But it's nice what he said without knowing. It says, it says that from the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. He said it to us and to himself. He asked us to have a good relationship with the Father. I know that when we went to pray at Mama Del's house, I was inspired to preach about where we come from. Where we come from. If we are connected with the sea, we will not uh, 
get dried up. But if you are far from the waters of the sea, we will dry out. It's not because we are believers that we will be saved. What will save us is if we stay near the streams. There are believers who are already dried out. There are some believers who are already dehydrated because they have no water in them. God will judge us according to our words. Children of God, let's wake up. Let's go back to our first love. Our first love shall be for our Father. Because He does more than our parents, our birth parents. We, our parents did not even know us when we were inside the wombs. When I see a pregnant woman and realizing that there's a human being living inside them, I say, yes, we shall fear God. And that baby stays inside that uh, inside the womb in the water for nine months and he does not swallow that water and the water does not get into the ears. That is God's word. And sometimes you look at the baby breathing, you, you wonder if they really breathe in. How God is making that child grow up, you don't know. God is sparing us from different accidents. I'm telling you the goodness of God that we neglect. Sometimes we just dream about like holding a heart and saying, God, let me close my eyes and by the time I open them, this heart will be filled with money. What I'm saying happened to a pastor back home the mom died and he had no mind to bury her he was thinking that yeah, people will laugh, people will talk he said that God, I know you are God of miracles he put his heart down he said God, I'm closing my eyes and when I open my eyes, I want to see this heart full of money so that I can bury my mom. He opened his eyes, there was no money. He did it three times. When he realized that there was no money, he got angry. He got out and with his Bible and he was going where the mom was. And on the way, he chucked away the Bible because he was so furious. When he threw away the Bible, the Bible got open. And he went where the body was kept. He was crying for his mom's death, but he was really angry at God. The second day, they had to bury the mom. And and he was just sitting in the house and they told him some people are outside they're looking for you but 
when he was he was passing by uh, some villages before reaching where the mom's uh, body was. And he came out and he said, here I am, are you looking for me? And we heard a drum and we heard a message saying that there's a pastor's mom who's died in another village. So we have to come, that's why we came with uh, all these uh, gifts to bury her. And he, just, he said, okay, put it there. And a few moments later, they called him out. People from the next village came. Oh, we saw the people from that village coming by saying that we're going to the pastor's mom funeral. So here we are with whatever we got. The third village did the same thing. And they had enough to bury the mom. When the pastor saw this, he he, he, he was dismayed. He said, I was angry with God. I asked for money, but he didn't give it to me. But look what, what God has done. He went in the house, he locked himself up and started crying to God, humbling himself, asking for After the, the burial, the pastor said, I have, I have to go back. All the three villages were going back with him. And everyone was staying at the village as they were going along. And the pastor reached where he threw away the Bible. He found the Bible properly uh, looked after and put on a stone. He knelt down and he, he started sobbing again. When he came back, he told the congregation what has happened. God is not a liar. We always want fast, quick miracles. He did not know God. He was not patient. He did not want to listen to the Holy Spirit. He didn't want to put God first. He wanted a quick fix to some quick money to bury the mother. And everything was every necessary thing to bury the mom was there. That's what we do. I want us to read the goodness of the Lord in our lives. How many things, bad things that we are spared of that we can't see and God spare us from. How many arrows the devil throws at, at us in the darkness that we don't know, but God us. Do we go to school with the children? Do we know who they mix with? Do we know what our children eat at school? God watches over them. Sometimes we have no food or no drinks. God is providing for our needs. My beloved, the fact that you're breathing, you know, asthmatic. Sometimes we cause people we using 
that breath we have, not realizing. Speak to an asthmatic person, you know how valuable is the breathing. When they try to breathe, everything in the body is crunching up, just trying to get oxygen. But you and I breathe easily, we shout, we scream, we do whatever. There are, there are people who carry oxygen for the whole life. But we, we breathe freely and God has given us has given it to us really. Can we not be grateful to God and put him first in our lives? Just for the free air that we, we breathe freely that people are buying to breathe. Amen. There are some people who have wounds and you can see the bones, especially the back wounds, because no one can turn, turn them over. Amen. And some people are just criticizing others because they smell. Let me tell you that it's a blessing for you and I to wiggle around when we are sleeping. You just think, yeah, you're doing it by yourself, but it is a blessing. We're going to read the goodness of God that we neglect. Just being hungry, feeling hungry. It is a blessing to feel that you are hungry. There are people who don't know what hunger is. They don't even get hungry. For them to eat, you have to think about them. You have to push them and force them to eat even if they don't hungry. And because they don't eat or they're not eating properly, they're becoming sick, becoming anemic, and they are deteriorating. But when you feel hungry, you just run to get some food. It is a blessing. Amen. When we go to bed, there are people who sleep like babies. As, as, as soon as they hit the pillow, they knocked off. Amen. Amen. Some people, they don't, their heads do not even rest. They have to take drugs or medicines before sleeping. Amen. But you sleep peacefully. It is a blessing. Even if you just put a, a bed sheet and you sleep, it is natural things that God has Never ever God will come and say you've been sleeping for years, today you have to pay me to fall asleep. He gives it freely. It's God's goodness. We must know, we must remember that. So that we realize and know that we depend on Him. Just remember when you, you follow, you're running for the bus. Or just think about being chased up. Chased by a dog. You don't even think about left to right. Your main focus is to run. 
Have you ever noticed that your intestines are ruptured because it's been running? Just tell me what screws are keeping your intestines together in order not to fall or to drop out. Let's pray God. Let's pray God. Let's put it in place. We know that everything belongs to Him. We don't owe anything. The, de the devil went to have a conversation with God. Job did not realize. It. He was putting God first. He was not far from God as you and I are. He was putting God first in everything, even with his children. But one day the devil had a one to one with a God regarding Job. Where did you go? Oh, the devil said, oh, I've just been wandering around the world. Have you seen my child? No one is like him. Job did not know. And the devil said, don't even say that you don't know him. I know him better. The only reason he's putting you first is because he's got everything. Just take it and just take away everything that he owns. You'll see that he'll deny you. The word says, God who is the master of all, he allowed the devil to do whatever he wanted with your life. Do everything but do not touch his life, his soul. When we don't even appreciate the little that we have, I always wonder, would we hold on to God like Job did if we were as rich as we, he was and everything was taken away from him? How many times we complain even after uh, one nail has come off, we start telling people, oh, I broke my nail. How many, times, how many times we praise God to say, God, I've had this name for years and I thank you because it's come off today. God told Satan, go and touch him. That's why we have to always be under our Father's Job was before the Father. He was putting God first before everything happened. That's why he, he held on, he hung on while he was going through all the hardship. But if you and I are putting God aside, uh, putting whatever we need first, when the devil will have a one-to-one -one with God about us, I don't know if we will be able to conquer. God watches over us day and night. The title of my sermon is where shall I flee from God? Where shall I flee from God? He's the master of the whole world. He's the master of my life. We read Psalm 46, verse 1 to 12. Psalm 46, 1 to 12. Psalm 46, 1 to 12. 
Dieu est pour nous un refuge et un appui, un secours qui ne manque jamais dans la détresse. C'est pourquoi nous sommes sans crainte quand la terre est bouleversée et que les montagnes chancèlent à cœur de mer. Quand les flots de la mer mugissent, écument, se soulèvent jusqu'à faire trembler les montagnes. Il est un fleuve dont les courants réjouissent la cité des dieux, le sanctuaire de demeure du très haut. Dieu est au milieu d'elle, elle n'est point ébranlée. Dieu la secourt dès l'heure du matin. Des nations s'agitent, des royaumes s'ébranlent. Il fait entendre sa voix, la terre se fond et mouvante. L'éternel des armées est avec nous. Le Dieu de Jacob est pour nous une autre retraite. Venez, contemplez les œuvres de l'éternel, les ravages qu'il a opérés sur la terre. C'est lui qui a fait cesser le combat jusqu'au bout de la terre. Il a brisé l'arc, il a rompu la lance, il a consumé par le feu les chars de guerre. Arrêtez et sachez que je suis Dieu. Je domine sur les nations, je domine sur la terre. L'éternel des armées est avec nous. Dieu de Jacob est pour nous une autre retraite. Alléluia. Alléluia. Motona Sena Tango, Ramona et Mouro pour la papille. Sometimes I consider a human being as a butterfly. Tomana la papillon n'est pas la papillon n'est pas. We see how the butterfly flies. Coco, coco, pépé, pépé. You know the butterfly is never uh, stable. The butterfly is very fragile. If we are, if us believers are like butterflies, we have to know that we are in danger. The butterfly does not, does not go too far because the wind disturbs it. When a butterfly is flying, it never goes straight, it just goes from side to side. That is what a, a human being's life is considered when they put God after their own priorities. You are flying. You are flying a bit higher, but you are not stable. And before God, you considered as a butterfly. We must be like eagles. We flying with precision. We flying. We fly within reason. Whether we fly higher or lower, we know exactly where we what we aiming at or where we going. We don't want to be lower, we just want to go higher so we can see what's going on around the world. That's the life of a child of God who is before you. Because God is with you and you are with him, so he opens your eyes so you can see and know. That's what we have to bear in our mind. We depend on God. We cannot do anything by ourselves. Our lives is in His hands. Ecclesiastes said, I did everything, but I realized in the end that it's all vanity. If we are only after the world things and not focusing on God's, it is very sad for us. Whatever we own here will be left here. 
The only thing we will take to the Father is our soul. The Bible says, let's seek first the kingdom of God and everything will be given to us. But we do the other way around. We seek what we want first and God's things after. But we forget that God is the first and the last and he owns everything. We must wake up. I was happy with what, what Pastor Mark said on Friday. He said that uh, Mama Blanil's death was an alarm for us children of God. If the alarm goes off and you stop it and go back to sleep, it is very sad. When the alarm goes off, you, you must wake up, get ready for work. Children, God, God is not an idiot. God does not speak for no reason. His signs are not worthless. I was happy when he said, happy are those who die in the Lord. But if you and I say, oh, no, me, I'm not going to get closer to the Father. It will be sad because we have the chance right now. Let's wake up. Amen. Let's serve God in our lives. Let's take our responsibilities back. Let's take things seriously in order to go forth. I wanted to talk about us mothers. We are blessed and we are the ones chosen by God to be women of prayer. We are blessed because when you see in many congregations there are more moms who have But we take things for granted. I'm talking about us, Bethel's mom. There's something bothering us mothers. We're not gathering anymore for our prayers. When we're praying together, I could feel God's protection in the for the church. I could feel God's power. We have to give priority to meet in prayer to seek God's face. There was at some point so many people gave the reasons, the right or the wrong ones. We agreed to it and God blessed us through Mama Elise in order to do telephone conference prayer. We were first meeting in one place to pray, but now the prayer follows you in your home. But not many mothers take part. In your own home, just for one hour. To be in the Lord's presence, to pray for our church and our families. Mothers are neglecting it. They're not really taking part. 
bon de la téléphone, mais faut tous arrêter une fois par mois pour tout un autre sur le côté bon ça marque sur place. We have a problem that even if we're praying on the phone, we have to meet once a month to talk about things. And we mothers do not want, do, are not letting us to go to their homes to do that prayer. I'm not forcing anyone, I'm just making us understand. I'm not going to name the moms who let us, who let us go and pray in their homes. But I'm saying this. I'm just saying we only pray once a month. If we even have 12 moms, I know that there's more of us, but if there's only 12 moms, if you agree or let us come to your house to pray, if we came to your house in January, Remember that we'll come back January next year. Because we are only gathering once a month. It means when we come to your house once a month, the next time will be next year. I don't think it's a bother. If we love our God, it's not a bother. We're not asking you to cook for us. All we come for is prayer. If you give us a glass of water or a cup of tea to uh, recharge ourselves, it's not a big deal. We consider ourselves children of God, but yet we refuse to allow mothers to come to your home to seek God. So many times Mama is a, uh, send a message to say Mama Colette is looking for a volunteer to let us pray in the home but we hardly get any uh, positive I'm just going to point out that we're not going to stop our prayers because of our selfish needs. We're not going to gather this month because we have nowhere to. It's showing how much we are drifted. How much we are far from the Lord. How much we are putting our own priority before God. This is a food for thoughts for mothers. If we pray together, God is doing wonders. God is doing wonders in our families. Because He is a true God. If we're not praying, you can see how we're neglecting Him. And we are the first one to to win. Oh, nothing is working in Bethel. It starts spiritually before be, becoming physic, physical. Food for thought, mothers. Let's think about it and get back to our first love. Let's remember that everything in the world belongs to the Lord. Our lives and souls belong to Him. May God bless His word.